Here it is. And here we are. Everybody come on in the room. Everybody fall on in. How's everybody doing? Glad to have you guys tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have you all here on this lovely evening. What's up, nicety girl? I see you. What's up, sir, major? I see you. I see everybody in here. Um, my time zone is all the way off. I'm still in New York right now. Shout out to New York City. I am in New York City still right now. We've been out here working on this film, and I've been enjoying myself in New York. I absolutely love, love, love New York. New York is my place, man. I love New York. I have a great time. Everybody's cool as hell out here. New York got some real, real fly-ass people, man. Cool people out here, man. Real cool folks, man. I love the vibe. It's a nice change from L.A., man. Just walking around New York, just where I am down here in Midtown, man. Everything is like a carnival, nigga. I just ate an ice cream cone at 11 o'clock at night. Where can you get that? I went to the store, and there was one fucking selling ice cream cones, and I bought one. I'm walking. If you want to hop on, hop on, because we've got a lot of new faces in here. Let's see who these people are. Hello, Tariq. What's up, Chaos Eclipse? Hey, Tariq. I want to say thank you for coming to New York and doing that documentary on hip-hop, because there's a lot of people telling a lot of lies, and it's hard, yeah. to, it's hard to fight all of them. And so thank you for being the, the, the troll slayer. Um, yes, I went to a couple of uh, restaurants. Says, make my fish and then make my cake. And then PD's Steakhouse. I just wanted to tell you some restaurants no. in Harlem, black owned. And uh, make my okay, make my fishes in Harlem. Make my fish on Hunt Sixteen in Lennox, and it's right okay. next to a barbershop. Okay, was, okay, cool. I was up there earlier. Well, I was at Sylvia's earlier. I was at Sylvia's. Right, that's on Twenty Fifth. And okay, and on um, Hunt Twenty Fifth between Fifth and Lennox is PD's Steakhouse. You got to hit that. That's a black owned business and make my okay. cake. It's been in Harlem for like 20 years. Now, what do, what, what do they have? What do they specialize? Make in? my cake. Yeah. Uh, well, first off, when you walk in there, get the red velvet cake, start there. Okay. And they do everything. They special, they, they will print and put your face on a motherfucking cake. Like, oh, damn. they're the best. Damn. Okay. They, oh, I'm going to check them out. I'm going to check them out tomorrow. All right, thank you so much, thank brother. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Um, where my New Yorkers, man? Oh, let me ask my New Yorkers something, because I, I wanted to ask y'all. Y'all know those, because um, I need to get some new cologne, and there are these like um, um, fragrance shops that they sell perfume and cologne. I see a lot of them, um, especially over like around 8th Avenue. We were filming over around 8th Avenue earlier. So I keep seeing these places that says, yes, cologne, wholesale cologne, whoop de whoop. And I do need to get some cologne. Is that cologne legit? I just want to, I wanted, I had res. it looked janky for some reason. All those places kind of have a janky vibe. Are those legit cologne places? Because I don't want to go in there and get some shit that's watered down and spray it on me and I get a rash. So my New York cats, let me know if those places are legit to go get some cologne because there's a lot of them and I don't want no bootleg joints. Um, let me get um, Somali against Pan-Africanism. Let's get this person in. Yeah, so my New York people holler at me about that. What's up, Somali? Somali, hop on, sir, or ma'am. Hop on in while you're getting your... Well, you got your mic together, brother? There you go. How are you, sir? Yeah, uh, Tariq, I just wanted to ask you, um, with this documentary on hip-hop coming out, have the Caribbean and African executives in mid and middlemen in hip-hop pushed back against you behind the scenes? Well, they, they can't do anything. What are they going to do? You know, because we're not getting funded by them. We're not going to white mommy, white daddy, and that's who they're controlled by. They're controlled by the white dollars. We are not, you see. So what can they say or what can they do? 
You understand? Right. Because the thing is, Tariq, um, I really like what you're doing in reclaiming your people's history. And as a Somali, I'm very proud and happy that Black Americans are taking back control of every um, cultural creation that you guys made. That It makes me very mm -hmm. happy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, and we're doing it in a way that's very respectful. You know, we're not dissing or denigrating anybody, but the lies are going to stop, man. All these lies that these people are pushing, that's over with. And we're crushing these lies. And it, it had to come from a grassroots source. So, you know, that's what we're here for, the grassroots media, to bring the truth. So I can't wait for you guys to see the film. But thank you so much for calling, brother. Thank um, you, brother. My, my family. I, I put up a clip yesterday. What is my wife texting me? I put up a clip the other day. And... It was some clip about hip hop and it was just, I mean, everything in it was a lie. It was like from um, one of those major white media outlets. I forgot which one it is, what um, a, I, I forgot which one, but they were like, yeah, um, hip hop was started Caribbean culture, the Caribbean influence on hip hop. And it was horse crap, dude. I'm, I might play it when I do my broadcast tomorrow, but I mean, everything in it was a lie. This whole lie we're talking about some damn Jamaican toasting and dance hall and um, how Afro Caribbean and Latino and Black Americans all got together and created it is horse crap. Let, let's just stop. We, I'm tired of those lies. And notice whenever you see people pushing those type of lies, they never have any pioneers around. When they push those lies, they always got some weird um, journalist who they got on their payroll to push the agenda, but they don't have any of the pioneers. We, ladies and gentlemen, this movie, and if you've seen some of the pictures, we got everybody. Y'all, I want y'all to understand how historically significant what we're doing is. We got all the original folks. And this is the first time that damn near all of the real pioneers have been in one film together. This is really the first time. This is how historically significant this documentary is that we're doing. We got um, um, one of the first female MCs, Debbie D, and she's well, she was phenomenal. Debbie D was breaking down so much stuff. Is WD Shyrock. We're, we're still trying to work to get Shyrock in it. We had the first MC, the first hip hop MC, Coke LaRock. He's in it. Um, one of the first real lyricists of hip hop, Melly Mel. He's in it. We had, we got Grandmaster Kaz is in it. My brother Lord Jamar is in it. We got the first hip hop break dancer. Um, Trixie's in it, one of the first hip-hop b-boys, Sasa. I'm talking about the people who were getting down and breaking in the early 70s. Uh, Charlie Rock is in it. Man, do we even got the first hip-hop graffiti artist, the first artist who started modern graffiti, Cornbread. People were shocked that we got, we got everybody. We ain't bullshitting with this. They never get these people. And these are the real pioneers because the real pioneers, they're going to tell the truth when people start spewing these lies, which they're telling the truth in our film. This is going to shut down all the lies, ladies and gentlemen. We should have been shutting this bullshit down a long time ago. But they're really ramping up the lies now because hip hop is going to the Olympics and in 2028. So they're really going to ramp up this whole everybody created hip hop to try to um, um, wrangle it from foundational black American culture. And we're just not going to let them because they know hip hop is about to hit the, the international stage major. So they're already planning on wrangling it from us. They're going to start giving credit to everybody else and we're not going to let that happen. All of this bullshit about blacks and Latinos. No, 
no, no, no. All of that's going to stop. And the pioneers, you're going to hear it from their mouths, all right? You're going to hear it from the source. That's why they don't really show these brothers and sisters who we have in there. They don't really show them like that in the mainstream. Because they're going to say, hey, but we weren't doing no goddamn toasting. When you, what's that? I, it's very disrespectful for them to push lives like that. Nobody. I didn't talk to every single pioneer. Now one of them heard of no fucking toasting from Jamaica. None of them. So when the white media pushes that lie, they know it's a lie. They know it's a lie. That's a lie that they started making up in the 80s to wrangle um, um, the significance of hip hop away from us. When it became a viable worldwide global thing, they said, OK, we have to we, we can't give these foundation of black Americans all the credit. We're going to have to dilute it just like we did jazz. And we break that down, too. We go into how they've always done that to our music genres. Every time we create something, it's. It's denigrated at first. At first, they denigrate it, just like jazz. Jazz was looked at as negative. Rock and roll was looked at as negative. That was nigga music. When it went international, when you had the Beatles and all of these people and the Rolling Stones and all these people coming over trying to get the game and that, that stuff was taken around the world, all of a sudden, well, it ain't that bad, but we whites created it too. Just like with jazz, they they tried to say all of these other groups helped create jazz after it became a phenomenon. So they're doing the same exact thing with this culture, but we're we're heading them off at the path. So we're doing what other people have not done. We're laying claim to the culture and bringing it back to foundational black American hands. They should have been doing what we're doing with jazz. They should have been doing what we're doing with rock and roll. And I understand a lot of brothers and sisters back in those days, they didn't have an international reach. Um, they may have or may not have had the resources to go international like we are doing now. But we're getting all the straightening going. We're just not going to let them run with that narrative. And I'm telling you, this film we're doing is going to be huge. Um, they're going to be teaching this shit in schools. That's how deep we're going. They're going to be teaching this stuff in schools. Because we, we're getting these stories straight. We're clearing up all the lies and all the myths and all the misconceptions. Because people got this thing where if we do something creative or we do something constructive, they have to make us share credit with everybody else. And then ultimately these people will start taking credit and then saying, we got it from them, which is what they're doing. And we as foundational black Americans didn't get no part of hip hop from no Caribbeans. These are just facts. It's either the truth or it's not. And if we got some for the career from the Caribbeans, show us what, all of that sound system book, man. Wait till y'all see the film. That toasting nonsense. We got the sound system from them. Not That's nonsense. And we debunk it and we prove that it's nonsense. I cannot wait for you to see. And we do it very respectfully. We're very respectful in the film. You know, we're not we're not trying to hurt feelings, but some feelings will get hurt. Now, there were some people who were going in like Randy Short. He's in it. Dr. Randy Short was going in. Lord Jamar's going in. There were some people. Debbie D went in a little bit, too. Yeah. But for the most part, it's a very respectful thing. We were just letting you know what it is. We're not beating up on anybody, but we're going to get this truth straight. Man, we got a lot of people in here. Let's get um, Broke Uncle Penny Bob. What kind of name is that? What's up, Broke Uncle Penny Bob? But yeah, my New Yorker people, let me know about those cologne shops out here, these cologne perfume shops, and let me know if that stuff is authentic. And also, my New York people, let me know about the barbers out here. I want to try some different barbers out here. You know what? Because uh, I look on my apps for barbers nearby. I see a lot of those Dominican barbers. Are those Dominican barbers cool? They have the fresh fades. 
Are those Dominican barbers cool? All my New York guys holler at me. What's up, I'm broke, Uncle? Hey, Tariq, how you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm wonderful, man. I'm wonderful, man. Hey, man, I got I to gotta, I gotta admit, man, I cannot wait for this hip-hop docu- documentary to come out, man, because yeah. as you said, the truth needs to be told. It has been, you know, oh, 50 years now, and I'm surprised that no one has had the guts or the courage to tell the full, complete story of our music because this music has so many roots from every musical genre that we created. It has roots in the blues. It has roots in gospel. It has roots in jazz. Yet, you have people from other cultures, Jamaicans, Puerto Ricans, many of them, quite frankly, didn't want anything to do with us. You know, right. but they want they want they want they want the credit for stuff that they yeah. didn't do. And I had a conversation with my cousin. He's a DJ. He's been a DJ for over thirty years, and he is from New York. And when you sit down and you talk to him, he will tell you. Even when hip hop really got going in the nineteen eighties, the Puerto Rican crowd they weren't really rocking with it like that because they were off doing their own thing. The Caribbean yeah. crowd they weren't rocking with it because they were off doing their own thing. They were trying to survive their way. We as black Americans, we were trying to survive our way. And this is in the 1980s New York as the melting pot that it is now. So how in the yeah. hell if people don't want anything to do with us back then, all of a sudden they want to claim credit for stuff they didn't do. This should have been, right. this should have been told back in the 70s. It should have been told in the 80s. It should have been told in the 90s. May this be yep. a lesson to us. What happens when you allow culture vultures in the culture who do not care about the people. Let's use, let's use this as a lesson. I'm out. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Real talk. Yeah, we should have got this straight a long time ago, man. This should have really been straightened out a long time ago. We didn't let these lies fester too damn long. And again, they started really pushing these lies in the 80s when hip-hop really became a global thing in the 80s. Then they started with that Caribbean toasting nonsense. Yeah, yeah you dig? And I'm, I'm still trying to track the origin of that lie. Because some of these lies, we're tracking the origins of them. There's one lie that they used to say that Coke Rock was Caribbean. And I know one person, it was a, an Asian dude named Jeff, Jeff Chang, I think this is. He wrote that in the book, Can't Stop, Won't Stop. He wrote a book about hip-hop. And, he, and the book straight up lied. Just said, um, Coke Rock is Caribbean. And Co- Coke Rock is in our film. You're like, I ain't no damn Caribbean. Man, my family's from North Carolina. I'm not Caribbean. They would try to say some of the early B-boys were Latino. I've had them. They're like, we ain't no damn Latino. Our people from North Carolina, most of the most of the early pioneers, their families are from North Carolina, South Carolina. I, I'm sitting here with them. They're telling me this out of their own mouths. Do you can listen to some bullshit ass person writing a book with an agenda, or you can listen to the damn people themselves. I have the original people telling you all of that is horse crap. Dude, we got Disco King Mario's daughter in the movie, nigga who's straightening a whole bunch of stuff out too. We're not fucking around with this movie. <laughs> Dude, we ain't playing at all. We got when I say we got everybody, we got everybody in it. Cuz somebody was saying, "Y'all need to do something about Disco King Mario, nigga. We are 10 miles ahead of you, dude." We got a whole segment about Mario. We got Mario's daughter in this movie, dude. We got Mario's right hand man. I'm um, cool, Clyde. Uh, I'm um, cool, DJ D. We we got all of them. Come on, man. We got all of them. We got it covered. There's no stone left unturned. When I say this is this is going to be the definitive film on hip hop, that's what we mean. This is going to clear up and straighten out everything. Yeah. Let's get my brother Beatzilla in here. Beatzilla, hop on, sir. Beatzilla. I'm good. How are you? Man, I'm good, brother. And uh, again, man, applause to you for uh, even putting this together. And a uh, shout out to you from the from the musician squad. Because, you know, yeah. the tie-in to live music, 
to hip hop is it's intertwined and it's all a cultural thing. It's one big thing. And they're so trying to uh, micro what hip is like, oh, it's a New York thing. No, it's a foundational black American culturalistic thing. So I'm right. pass off. So keep doing it, brother. You already know how we rock. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yes, indeed. A lot of folks in here. Shout out to the family in here. Let's get Terry, Melanin Magic. What, what, what happened, Terry? Oh, oh, did I get you out of here by mistake, Terry? My bad. I was going to get Melanin Magic in here. I made a mistake and got her up out of here. That's my bad. Uh, let's get a couple more. Let's get Sage. Let's get Brother Sage in here. I see Sage raising his hand. All right. So Brother Sage. Brother Flex, can you hear me good, brother? Yes, sir. What's well, up, first, man? First of all, I got to welcome you back to the city. Um, you had a few yeah. questions. So you said those um, yes. um, um, colognes, not, that, that's the Arab stuff. We not, don't, don't touch that. That's going to be like some okay. type of um, rash. Don't, don't, don't mess with that. <laughs> um, um, you definitely definitely need to try out um, custom slices, black owned pizza spot. But there's always a line outside. Um, we we try to support that as much as we could. Shout out to where them. they in Brooklyn, though. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna be in Brooklyn tomorrow. Wait, when it's called cuts and slices. Cuts and slices. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you the address if you need it. Um, there, there's yes. a line outside, so. Um, I can call ahead. I know the owner. I can call ahead and let him know you coming. So you know you can yes. get you know done one two three. Not a problem. But um, okay. what else? What else would you looking for, brother? Oh, the, the barbers, man. Where are the good barbers out here? I can DM you um, specific barber that that I could DM you my barber if you want. Uh, he's in Brooklyn also. Okay. Um, obviously you know okay. I'm from Brooklyn, so he's he's in Brooklyn yeah. also. Um, shit, he can cut you at six in the morning if you want. He he usually works early. Um, and also yeah. late whenever you need, but it's very reliable. What else okay. you looking for, brother? What else? You... <laughs> uh, Did you get? Let me Hold see. On. I wanted to ask you this too, brother Flex. Did you get that car service yeah. that you were looking for? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah, a brother um, Antonio. He has a car service, and we hired him, and he's been working with us for the last couple of days. So, if Antonio is listening, shout out to that brother. He's from Brooklyn too. That's perfect. So, I wanted to ask you this too, brother. Um, when you last time you was here, you went up to the Bronx and Harlem, right? Yeah. Did you see, and this this is Flex telling y'all, this ain't me. When you went up to the Bronx, you went up to Harlem, did you see the Puerto Ricans intermingling with no. the blacks? No. So why no, in the I... hell do we think about 50 years ago they were any nicer than they are today? Yeah, I, I don't see a lot of that. I don't see a lot of Puerto Ricans in Harlem. And when I was over there in Rosedale, I didn't see a lot. Because people get this I, misinformation about, oh, New York being the melting pot. There's a such thing called Spanish Harlem. So the fact that there's a Spanish Harlem, that lets you know that they don't really fuck with us like that. Excuse my language. They don't really mess oh, yeah. with us like that in New York. So there is a melting pot per se because the whole big city has a lot of different people in it. But when it comes to specifically like black people's foundational black Americans, we don't live amongst Hispanics like that. We live amongst our yeah. own in our yeah. sections in Harlem, in Brooklyn, in the Bronx, in Queens. We don't really live together like that. So that's a definite misconception. I want to thank you again, brother, for um putting flying all the way from, you know, LAX to New York and yeah. really speaking on our culture, brother. I can't thank you enough for putting it in the right you know, um, perspective. Shout out to you for this. I can't wait to put money on it. I can't wait to support it. I can't wait to promo it. Um, also, yes, last question for you, brother. Is there any chance that you're going to get Nas to speak on this one? I, I was thinking about that, but I really wanted to focus on a lot of the pioneers. And Nas is my guy. I love Nas to life, but um, I, don't, I don't know if that would tie in because it's really about some of the unsung people of hip-hop some of the ones that were there from the very, very, very beginning and um, their story. So I get Nas and something else, but shout out to Nas. Nas was in one of my movies already, so a shout out to him. Wait, wait, but thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you. Brother. Yeah, the only person who's kind of modern and, you know, well, Rakim is considered old school now. Um, I wanted Rakim, and the reason I wanted Rakim is because we have a section in the film 
where we're talking about the influence of the nation of gods and earths on certain aspects of hip hop culture. Cause that's another element that's left out. People talk about the knowledge part and we, we go into that too. And that come that's again, more foundational black American culture. The other element of hip hop is the knowledge. The certain consciousness that has always been a, a, constant thread in hip-hop there has always been somewhat of a consciousness of black power vibe in it that's never really discussed like it should be and the influence of some of the five percenters and the nation of islam and um just a lot of the conscious movement that's been throughout you had brothers you know with, with names like raheem who was early on doing his thing and so many others the supreme team and other groups like that, that, you know, we break all of this stuff down. I'm telling you, we are going deep in this thing. We're going deep and we're going deep in a way that only FBAs can go deep in because we, we understand our culture. We understand our history. We understand, um, the, the, the movements within our community. So we know how to get into the little nuances that other people can't really touch. They don't really understand. You understand um, when they start talking about all of these other outside groups help create some damn hip hop. No, you y'all didn't have the same consciousness as us. When you heard James Brown, I'm black and I'm proud that don't, that don't resonate with the Latino community. Let's stop playing. That's not even a thing that don't resonate, which is that record. James Brown is damn near rapping on that record. And everybody knows that James Brown was a major influence of all hip hop artists. So we felt that as foundational Black Americans. That's something that we felt. We understood the nuances of that. And people like the last poets, you know, we always forget about them. These brothers were rhyming from a conscious perspective, mixing it in with street jargon. We leave that element out. Then we had Dolomite. Around the same time hip-hop is rising up, this is the stuff we were listening to. We as foundational black Americans, we could understand and appreciate a Dolomite because he was talking in a, in a slick jive language and doing these rhymes that we got. You know, they, they call it the chitlin circuit, but yeah, we got it. We understood that. Other people, they, they, they didn't get that. So we got to put everything in the right perspective. All right. Let me see. Who is this? We got Sienna Jones. All right, let's get Sienna Jones in here. What's up, Sienna? I think that's your name. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. How are you, Sienna? I I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. But um, to piggyback off of what Sage was saying, I'm in the Bronx. I predominantly live in the Bronx, raised in the Bronx, between the Bronx and Harlem. And there is no FBA black neighborhood in New York City at all. We're inundated mm. with Dominicans. Puerto Ricans have now moved on and they've melded in with the whites. Like they moved yep. upstate, they moved to Westchester. And they weren't, I have Puerto Ricans in my family, very prejudiced. They weren't feeling us like that anyway. So it's no loss. But again, in New York City, there's no predominantly black American neighborhood or area. It's inundated with Dominicans. You got Venezuelans coming now. So Caribbeans obviously are here with us as well. But like a black neighborhood, black American neighborhood, not at all. Just mm, my two cents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, dear. Yeah, hey. man. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that. Um you know, it's there's no predominant FBA areas. You know, we're scattered around now, you know, even in Harlem. And, and the people are cool. I'm not saying that as, as a complaint or whatever. The people are actually cool. You know, I go to Harlem and everybody's real cool, even the FBAs and the non-FBA people. I, it was a, um, I, I, I want to say it was like a Dominican cat came up to me today. Like, hey, man, I love, I love your films. Oh, thank you, brother. And he kind of had a little Rico Suave wave going on. So I think he was Dominican. He had the little Dominican look down over there by Times Square. So, you know, every, everybody's cool. But, yeah, it's not that. I, I don't see no FBA enclaves like that. You know? 
Let me get some more calls in here. What T.S. Giselle, what are you? Lord. Lord, T.S. Giselle. All right, let's get um, Foxfire. Let's get Foxfire. All right. Let's get Foxfire, and then we're going to get Black Tron after Foxfire. Lord Frogmire. What's up, Lord Frogmire? Hop on, Lord, Lord Frogmire. And then we'll get Black Tron. Let's get Black Tron in here. All right, how you doing? What's up, Black Tron? I'm good. How are All you? right, man. Shout out to the room. Um, Just piggyback what uh, the last um, person said. Uh, yeah, it's true, but, you know, at most, you may find there, there are pockets of folks, unfortunately, in the projects and, you know, neighborhoods where, you know, there's a lot of uh, project developments, and so yeah, it's still, you know, quite a few FBA families there, and then, like, yeah. on a few blocks, you know, that we may own homes and whatnot, but as yeah. predominantly, um, yeah, that's... Yeah, you'd have to break it down by block. There you go. Thank you, sir. Well, there's a lot going on with your phone, brother. Okay, Lord Frogmire, are you ready? Or are you just hopping on just to be hopping on? All right, let's get um Max Slug in here. Let's get brother Max Slug. There are a lot of folks in here. And Waiting on Max Slug. Brother Tariq, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. How you doing, fam? Oh, uh, man, I uh, just at work, man. Just wanted, to, just wanted to say, man, I'm loving what you're doing about this hip hop, getting everything straight. I was gonna say, man, um, do you have a segment in the hip hop movie about um, like the music of the funk and all that too? Because I know funk was the, the the music that everybody was listening to. I know that's what I do. Yeah. I do yeah. funk hip hop myself. Yeah, yeah, we do talk about how funk and disco were kind of prominent in the early days of hip hop. So yeah, we break all that stuff down. Yeah, we 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 hit every cylinder in this thing. So it's it's gonna be a phenomenal piece. Let's get Ontario. What's up, Ontario? Uh, nothing much. Can you hear me? Yes, indeed, I can hear you. All right, um, long time listener, first time caller. Um, yes. Yeah, what I wanted to talk about with regards to the hip-hop documentary is uh, another docu-series that's out there on stars called The Origins of Hip-Hop. Um, have you had a chance to see that? No, no. What's that one about? What are they talking about? Well, it's a docu-series and they don't have any pioneers. Like, the first episode is Fat Joe, so you know what the deal is. Oh, Lord. Okay. And, yeah, my, my whole thing with that is, like, I watched it and when Fat Joe says that blacks and Latinos created hip-hop 50-50, um... After you watch his segment, you see that lie start to unravel because if that's the case, then Fat Joe would talk about some of these Latino pioneers in hip hop. Right. But, when, but when you listen to that docuseries and you watch it, he talks about living in hotels and listening to Slick Rick and, and uh, Dougie Fresh as inspiration. Where's the, where's the Latino hip hop artists that you're talking about who are pioneers? Right. And also he was, he was hanging out with the Digging in the Crates crew with Lord Finesse, Diamond D and Big L. Where's the Latino right. version of that? And why weren't you hanging with the pioneers, uh, the Latino pioneers, if they did, in fact, help blacks create hip hop? So you see, it, right. it's, it's all a big finesse, man. Like, I'm glad you're making the documentary. I'll, I'll be one of the first people to pick it up when it comes out. And yes, I'm going to land my plane right there. Yes, indeed. And yeah, you when, when Slick Rick and the Digging in the Crates crew, all that's damn near 20 years after hip hop was created. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? That's getting into damn near 20 years after the fact when they start talking that. See, that's the problem. When people start talking about the origins, they, no, none of these people go into the origins of hip hop. They start, they start around 1979 and then they'll start including the Rocksteady crew and all of these people. No, no, dude, we're going to have to get to the early 70s. That's where we start. Hell, truth be told, we start in the 60s really, with, with cornbread doing the graffiti and how that tied into the flyers and all of that. We break this stuff all the way down, man. We break this stuff all the way down. See, they keep moving the timeline. They, If they talk about the origin of hip-hop, 
and then start talking about what happened starting in 1980. See, that's the finesse right there. The hip hop was in this damn second generation by 1980. They don't never talk about the, the first people because all of them were FBA. All of them. It was 100% FBA. Let's just keep this thing a buck. And the handful of non-FBAs that were around, they elevate them. Flash, Grandmaster Flash, who's a non-FBA, African Bambada, who's non-FBA, and Kuhurk, Herc, who's non-FBA. Not taking away from any of their contributions, but there is a reason why they would elevate them because they were probably the only non-FBAs who were around in those early days. This is why a lot of people are like, hey, you got to recognize Mario, Disco King Mario, who was fully FBA. There's a reason why certain people have been omitted and people are now saying, hey, no, 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 we got to include some of these other people like Mario. That's why they just named the street after him. Because this brother was integral in the creation of the hip hop culture. We break that down in the movie. This is going to be, this is a game changer, family. We're going to have to shut these lies down and it's only up to us. It's up to us to shut these lies down. And then I'm tired of hearing it and because they know that they're lying. And it's a, it's a very disrespectful lie. The, the lie is designed to disrespect foundational black Americans. It's designed to disrespect us. You understand? Because they know it's a lie. You cannot find, I, I'm, there's not one person who heard some damn toasting record. Not one. Wait till you hear these pioneers tell you what the real deal was. When I was asking them about some toasting records, they're like, where the hell will we hear some toasting records from? Who the hell was playing toasting? Man, we were we had James Brown sliding the family stone. We were funking out. We were funking and discoing it up. We were booking out here. The early 70s in the Bronx, they called it the boogie down Bronx. People were partying. Who in the fuck wanted to hear some slow ass reggae or Caribbean music? No disrespect to your culture. Nobody was listening to that who were FBA. Let's just keep it a bug. They weren't. That wasn't our vibe at the time as foundational black Americans. We weren't listening to that. Let's stop lying. God, we got to stop these lies. Man. What's up, Dr. Um, Davinsky? Well, we got the suspected white supremacists in here. What, what y'all doing up? What's up, Dr. Davinsky? Should I get Dr. Davinsky on? Uh, I don't know if I want to engage in your bad faith arguments. Oh, let me ask him something. Let me. I do want to ask you something about some of the people in your culture. Dr. Davinsky, and I'm not going to have you on here spewing your bad faith arguments, but I do want to ask something. Hop on, Dr. Davinsky. Rick, how you doing, homie? I'm good. I'm, I'm good, brother, and I'm not a high man. I'm a foundational black man. Sir. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, um, now, um, how, how does your, your community feel about you know, that, that song that try this in a small town, I know the white supremacists in your community, that song had them really hyped up. That was the modern version of eye of the tiger. Um, after that, that, yeah, after that ass whooping that my, my folks gave, um, to y'all in Alabama, that song fell off the charts. What's the feeling? Yeah, but now the, we got uh, a new white anthem. Is that redheaded guy? You know, playing the guitar. Whoa. <laughs> You know, who is that? I don't know who he is. Who is you don't know that one? It's, it's like um, he's singing in the woods on his guitar, crying about being like working class and talking about welfare queens. <laughs> it's it's oh, pretty I, fire. I you should one. listen to it. I'm sure it's going to enrage you. Okay, I got to hear that. But I just wanted to know how, how your community is holding up with um, the moral support of that record has kind of fallen and, you know, that ass whooping kind of made y'all funny style. So are you guys okay? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure that, uh, you know, Nickelodeon or, or um, you know, one of these companies is going to pick up this Aquaman story, you know. Um, they love to do these black superheroes now. So it's probably going to be a new Aquaman and a Chairman. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe you could fund yeah. it with your museum profits. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We we are we had a. Why don't you, hang on, hang on, right? Tariq. This could be funny. Why don't you buy the chair and like put it into an exhibition and like you know put glass I'm, around it, bulletproof glass. I've been trying to buy it. I've been trying to buy it. I've been looking for the damn chair. So <laughs> yeah, I will definitely put it in the museum. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah, I am looking for that chair. I do want to put it in the museum. All right. Let's see who we got. We got a lot of folks in here. Let's get um what's your name, man? Um Nai Hai. All right, let's get Nai Hai. Hi Nai, whatever your name is. What's up, Hi Nai? Uh hey Tariq, how's it going? Can you hear me? Um, I'm good. I'm good. Now, sir, you're gonna have to take the Bluetooth out. Here. The reception is bad. Hey, is that better? Much perfect, better. Perfect. Much better. Now, what's up? Uh, first off, I just want to say I'm a big fan. You've really uh, opened my eyes to a lot of things as a first generation American. Uh, and I just want to ask just a quick question. Uh, did you see? Now, where are you from? Now, wait. Hold on. Where I'm are you from, from Los Angeles, California, born and raised. But your first generation from oh where, my though? parents are Armenian. Uh, my father oh my God. father was born in Turkey, and my mom is actually from Ethiopia, but she's one hundred percent Armenian. Oh, okay, yeah. got it, got it. But she just happened to be born. In yes, yes. Uh, okay. So my question was: you- uh, Academics and Zerka recently name dropped you in one of their uh, live streams. Did you happen to see that? I saw the clip. Yeah, I did see the clip. Was the yeah. things Zerka said about the DMs true, or was that bullshit? Absolutely not. He's well, that's a pathological mm-hmm. liar. This guy never DM me. He was lying his ass off. Yeah, this guy never DM me whatsoever. Yeah, I figured that was the case. So, honestly, I just wanted to hear it from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just using my name for clout, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. and you know, academics holla at me because yeah, academics. You want me to go on your broadcast and chop it up? I will chop it up. I got a bunch of interviews when I get back to LA. But yeah, that's Zerka, dude. He's just clout chasing. He's just another. Um, a nobody white supremacist trying to get clout off black people because he comes from a failed culture. Yep, yep. But um, yeah, my man. But thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. Man. I appreciate it, man. It. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah. Academics and um, that Zerka guy. Um, my name came up, and this dude was talking about yeah, Tariq. We were DMing each other, and he was giving me pro- some shit. He was saying, "I've never DM this buffoon ever." So he's just saying stuff. So those are all lies. All right. Let me see. Um, Lord Frog, are you good or do I need to take you off the queue? All right. T.S. Giselle, what do you want? Man. Oh, T.S. just get on because you just keep raising your very masculine hand. So just say what you need to say. What's up, T.S. Giselle? About time. I have to go to bed. I, I'm i on business travel, um, and I have to be up early. I don't... Yes, I know. Those, those construction sites need strong brothers early <laughs> no, in the morning. But go no, ahead. no, I'm on the 17th floor in the Marriott, because that's what my company does. Right, because you're... <laughs> Because you got a hard hat on and you're building some cement to, to build um, the building. But go ahead. Anyway, so I don't really have any comments um, regarding the hip hop discussion because I'm it's just not my favorite genre. I feel like hip hop is the worst genre of music Black people created. That's just my opinion. Though. I'm not here to debate that. Um, I came because I have an announcement. The cat's oh. out the bag. If you look at the jumbotron. Don't, don't, don't you show nothing. And don't, I don't want to see baby no book. is on the way. T.S. Giselle is pregnant and the baby daddy is Sir Major. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got to get Sir Major on. You're not going to do it. Hold on, I got to let Sir Major on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sir, I'm, I gotta get Sir Major on here to defend himself. You're not gonna disrespect Sir Major like this. man. Man, I don't know what the fuck. Is going on. Hey, 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 Tariq, you know, the, you know the big burly nigga trying to get it back in blood because that video I posted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I have a lot of meetings hey, in the hey, morning. Tariq, 
you know that deodorant, if that deodorant can work on anybody, it's going to work on T.S. Giselle. Hey, <laughs> we're going to send him a care package, okay? Uh, Lord. But, Tariq, since I got the mic, I want to say this really quickly. Um, yeah. You you had brought up um, uh, that uh, try it in a small town, right? I, I just want to play yeah. some really quickly, 30, uh, nine seconds. This guy is a froster. He stole a, a the rift from Michael Jackson's Beat It. Listen to this. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he stole the riff, and you make a record about, you know, dis- disrespecting black folks, and Michael Jackson's theme, or Beat It, the, the whole treatment was about beating it, get get out of here, get lost. In, in this yeah. record, tried in a small town, it's about come here, you're going to fuck around to find out. We're going to, you know, use violence. We're going to, um, you know, cause black harm. And so I just wanted to say that, you know, he, he's dissing us in a record, but he's using our our, our rift to illustrate right, the record. Told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man, that's, that's what they do, man. These people have a vulture mentality, man, big time. So yeah, and and that song has fallen completely. It's, it's falling off the charts heavy because again the um, okay wait, this way, Lord Frog, Lord Frog, are you trying to say something? Lord Frog, are you all right? Have you been kidnapped? If you were at T.S. Giselle's house, tap the phone three times and and try to get the rope off your legs. All right. Okay, this nigga is locked in a closet at T.S. Giselle's house. All right. Man. All right, let's get, um, who is this? Let's get Rockavelli. Let's get Rockavelli. What's up, Rockavelli? Let's get Rockavelli in the house. And then we're going to get Nikki after Rockavelli. Rockavelli, hop on, man. Yo, what's going on, Tariq? I'm good, Rockavelli. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. Yo, what's your, what's your thought on that West Coast, West Coast politics thing with WAC 100? Is he an FBA or what? I feel like he be, I don't know. I don't feel like nobody be speaking on the shit that he be doing. What you, what you think about that? This is just a random topic. Yeah, that's a little bit too random. I mean, he's FBA, but yeah, that's that's random, dude. I don't even understand what that means. But um, Nikki, hop on, dear. I am so sorry. I hit it by accident, but I just wanted to oh. let you know that I know that your documentary is going to be fire. Love yes, you ma'am. dearly. Take care. Thank you, dear. All right, it was Nikki. This dude asking random questions about whack. Why is this dude? Well, you got a real weird screen name, dude. Gay boy, gay boy. Hop on. Why? Why is your screen name that? That's real weird. That's weird and trollish. Hop on, man. And you requested to get on. That's real weird. That's a real weird trollish name. All right. Um. Oh well, yeah, we're waiting on that person to get in, and while we're waiting on that person, let's get on. We we'll get Minnesota Fats in here, all right, and then we'll get Vibe in. All right, so Minnesota Fats or Vibes, which one? Hey, what's up? What's up, Tyreek? How you doing, my man? What's up, Bob? How are you? I'm doing pretty good, doing pretty good, man. You're doing a great job, man, with the FBA community, so I got to respect that. I just got one question for you, man, because I know you're a historian in black and blackness also, but a historian overall. And I was in a live, I got one question. I was in a live, you know, where it was three or four Dominicans, you know, kind of, you know, beating up on this Haitian woman about history. And, you know, the Dominican, the, 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 the Dominicans were saying to the Haitian woman that, they was the first revolt, you know, not the Haitians, you know, at, at that time. And then, you know, they was kind of saying that, 
you know, why do you call it a black revolt? Because she was saying it was a black revolt. They was like, nah, it wasn't a black revolt. It was just an island revolt. Why are you saying it was a black revolt? So can you explain a little bit on that with the Dominicans saying that there, there was a first revolt, you know, in the, uh, that goes against the slaves in slavery? Yeah, well, they're probably talking about there was a revolt that happened in Hispaniola, and that was before it was Haiti. See, they try to mix up stuff, and on Christmas, sometime Christmas Day in the 1500s, there was a revolt, but it was black people. It was the black people rising up against the Spanish when it was called Hispaniola. I don't think they had split it up into Haiti and Dominican. It wasn't that yet. So they're probably trying to reference that and they're trying to misrepresent history because the the Dominicans as we know them, they they've never really risen up against risen up against the Spanish. Um it's always the 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 real ones who identify as black who rise up against the Spanish in all of those Latin American cultures. In Cuba, it was the black Cubans who are rising up against the oppressive system. Even in Mexico, it was many of the black Mexicans. Uh, hell, Vicente Guerrero was one of the people who helped get Mexico its independence. And he was the one who stopped slavery in Mexico. He was black, black Mexican. Um, down in Colombia, the black ones were rising up. Um, all of those Latin American countries, the black people were putting in the work. Yeah, going back to Mexico, people like Gaspar Yanga, look him up. He was um, rebelling. He was a black maroon out there fighting against the Spanish. So it was always the black Latinos, quote unquote, that was putting in the work. So always put it in that perspective. Let's get Nita. Nita. Miss Nita, you want to unmute your microphone, ma'am? How you doing? I'm good, Miss Nita. How are you? I'm great. I can't complain. Uh, where are you from? I was, I'm originally from Houston, Texas, and now I live in North Carolina. There you go. So what's on your mind, ma'am? Um, I wanted to talk about the guy who tried in a small town. Yeah. I don't hear no one talking about that was the same singer with the Las Vegas shooting. Oh, okay. Okay. So I don't hear. Okay. Okay. So I'm you, sister, you lost me. Okay. To be honest, I was lost. All right. So let me get some more people in. Yes, sis, you completely lost me. I, I didn't really feel like trying to figure out where you were going with it. Right. Sound like Miss Nita was over there eating some red beans and smoking a little something. Miss Nita over there smoking and drinking. It's all right, dear. You're going to be all right. All right. Uh, let's get viral drip. Viral drip in the building. What it do, viral drip? What's up, Tariq? Thanks for letting me up to speak. I think what she was referring to was uh, Jason Aldean was performing during that mass shooting in Las Vegas. When he ran his ass off the stage. Oh wow! Okay, oh, okay, okay. That makes. Sense. But oh. I wanted to tap in on what you were saying about Gasky Yango. He he had a uh, city that he had started down there in Mexico, and they ran all of the black people out of that city. And when they see black people in that city now, they stare and point, like. Mm. Uh, they foreign to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's heavy, but yeah, it was the black people who were getting the Spanish off everybody's back. It was the black folks down there doing that. So shout out to Gasper and the spirit of Gasper Ganga. Shout out to him. Um, okay, we got how many people we got in here? All right, we got damn near a thousand people in here. We're in here heavy, ladies and gentlemen. We're in here heavy. And don't forget to get the Root Work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Go get the Root Work deodorant at Root Work Style because there are people who are still walking around musty. I've, I've met some musty people here in New York, to be honest. 
some musty people of all nationalities just casually walking by and doing business. And I'm saying, hey, this person is very musty. This person could use some root work. And I can understand people can get musty out here because there's a lot of walking. Yeah, you're walking a lot and it's very easy to get musty. So you need some root work and you need to carry some with you. You need two bottles. You need one at home and then one to carry with you. And I'm telling you, I've met people and I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, like, damn, this nigga needs some root work. This will really get his shit together. You understand? So, yes, rootworkstyle.com. Get two bottles of it. For real. Some of y'all don't understand. I guess some of you are very used to being musty. No. Just assume, hey, if I don't put on enough deodorant or the right deodorant, I'm going to be humming under the arms out here in these streets. So get that root work. It lasts very long. It smells very good. And it's all natural. You guys are going to love it. And people love it. The people who put it on, people love it. They love the root work. They love it. They, they love the energy that it has. They love it. All right. Let's get um, Change. I think that's your name. Change. I think that's your name. All right, change. Chance. Yeah, um, I got a question. Chance. Okay, first of all, Chance, where are you from? Oh, uh, yeah. This is Chance from um Loxahatchee, Florida. Okay, that accent. Is that a Canadian accent? Where are you from? From I was born in um in Coral Springs, Florida. And my par- both my parents, they're from Jamaica. Oh, okay. There you go. That's that. Okay. That, that doesn't even sound like a Jamaican accent, but okay. Sometimes people's accent can go all over the place, but go ahead. What's on your mind, Chance? Chance. Chance. Go ahead, Chance. Um, yeah, I want to know, uh, what's the stuff that you use for your hair again? Like where, where can I buy like that stuff? Um, well, it's a, it's a secret location. I get it. It's from under your mother's teddy. It's some hair that grows under there and it's mixed in with her Croatian breast milk and it has a nice texture and I use it as a conditioner. So that's where I can get it. And you can get that too. (laughs) Come on, man. Why you got to this be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's under your mom's teddy. So, guess what I use? That's why my hair is so lush. Yeah. And it's and it smells good too. It has a nice little fragrance. It has a sweet breast milk fragrance, nigga. All right, let's get some more people in here. Let's see who we got. Uh, yeah, this nigga tried to have him. He's from Jamaica. That's not no Jamaican accent. And so uh, white supremacist from Canada somewhere. Okay, all right, let's get um who we got. What's up, Red Joker? I see Red Joker in the building. All right, let's get um Big John. Let's get Big John in here. What's up, Big John? What up, Tariq? Um Go ahead. Not gonna lie to you, I didn't think you were gonna give me a mic, but what up? Um how are you doing well, today? I'm good. Now why did you think I wasn't gonna give you a mic? Because I've, like, been in spaces like this before where it's, like, hella people, and I've never gotten a mic. So it's just, it kind of threw me for a loop kind of thing. There you go. So what's on your mind, brother? Um, nothing much, really. Uh, I just been, just started school today, so, yeah. Well, nigga, this is not a party line where you call up and just chat about your goddamn feelings. Did you have anything to contribute to the topic or whatever topic, bro? Um, I have a question for you. So I am a Dominican man. I was born, I'm a first generation in this country. I consider myself to be black. Like, I I obviously am not delusional. But I would like to know what your opinion on that is. Like, do you think I'm black at all? Or would you not consider me to be black? Because I'm not like, like American. Well, I am. I feel I feel like you get what I'm saying. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I would look at I'm looking at you. If this is you on your picture. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's you're a black Hispanic dude, but you're not a foundational black American. But I would say you're a black dude. You're just not a foundational black American. And to and from my understanding, a foundational black American is a person that is fully black, not like not of African descent at all, but just like fully black in no. the U.S. or what? No, just a non-immigrant. That's what a foundational black American is. That's a person who doesn't come from an immigrant background or one of their parents don't come from an immigrant background. Like me, I'm a full foundational black American. There's no immigrants in my family. Nobody in my family immigrated here from nobody, nowhere. We built the country from scratch. That makes us a foundational black American. That makes us different. It's like a Dominican. Like a Dominican, what's a Dominican? That's somebody whose lineage goes into the... Um, um, building of the, uh, the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for answering that. I'm. I just, just. I feel like a lot of people on Twitter uh, deny my blackness at all. They just. They just simply just say you're not black whatsoever. So I'm glad to hear someone with sense saying something else because it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're clearly black. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, people are just trolling probably. But yeah, thank you so much, brother. Yeah, he's a black dude. You know, he's just not a foundational black American. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here is the thing. A lot of the damn Dominicans don't be saying that they're black. That's who don't say they're black. It ain't us. Y'all be saying you ain't black. Yeah. And a lot of us are like, oh, you ain't black. Well, nigga, don't be black. Go on somewhere. But a lot of the Dominicans are the ones, oh, no, 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 black. I'm Spanish. I'm Spanish. It's that type of thing. So a lot of people are like, all right, well, y'all keep that same energy. Yeah. Man. Let me see who else. What's up, Sienna? Or well, Sheena. Sheena. Let's get Sheena. All right, let's get Sheena Latrice. Right. Let's get Sheena Latrice. What's up, Sheena? Um, Sheena. Hi, Tariq. How you doing? I'm good, Sheena. How are you? Um, nothing but positive energy. I'm sending your way. Um, the hope, the yes. hope is always the most, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. It just want to dive What's... in and just chop in because I know the other day when I pulled in, I think you might have received my energy negatively or wrong. And then there goes my phone clicking and stuff. I just wanted to say hello, send positive energy to the whole room. I'm not the, I just wanted, my message was for you, Tariq, um, because you kind of shut me down the other day when I was wanting to respond to one of the queens in the space that had a question about her child and their teacher, okay? And I don't know if you remember me, but that was the reason I pulled in, but then the, one of the homies was talking about politics, and there was a lot of energy going on, okay? I'm an energy right. person. I pick up energy quick, whoop, whoop, the whoop, the whoop, the whoop. You ain't got time to hear all that because you want to put me in an Uber and send me home after we we done uh -huh. type stuff but that uh -huh. wasn't the you know that wasn't the plan so i wanted you to know that i'm not that type of chick first of all because literally i'm going to be sending you home in an uber you got to go no. you can have to take a shower at your own house now be the chatty <laughs> yeah. uh, look, look, look that part okay yeah. so look i'm, I'm not going to overcrowd what i'm space. saying at all. all right. I'm not going to try all to take over your space. You can go home with your Uber first because you, you got to go up out of my shit. This, see, see, this lady, right, do you be doing this when niggas be smashing? No, do you I, do I this? don't smash niggas, first of all, because I, I, yes. I take care of my own pleasures, first of all. I don't smash niggas. I'm a grown bitch. I really came in for positive energy to the homie I'm... talking about, you know, being, you know, fuck with the Twitter and the communities and the people talking about walking your own path and walking your own culture in your own zone. If you Afrocentric or however you present to walk, walk in your own spirit. Don't let these people pull up in spaces and judge you and create you and manifest you. Rather, their space. Thank you, dear. Good Lord. This is one of them herbal tea chicks. I'm telling you, you smash them and you got to hear that. God damn. So you see what I'm saying? That's one of them herbal tea chicks who smoke them a good blunt, and then after you smash, you got to hear that herbal tea babble. Niggas do not want to hear that. Niggas got to make a decision. Do I need to get this booty call? That 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 pussy is popping, but damn, I got to hear this motherfucker mouth afterwards. 
ma'am, go home. Get in the Uber and go home. Ma'am, the condom has already been flushed down the toilet. Go home. No, listen, I just felt some energy after we did what we did. The kundalini spirit of what I felt when I was on top of you, my brother, um, it felt a little different this time. I just want to eat some kale chips with you and discuss some of this energy and vibrations that we can get your ass in that Uber and go home. Just go home, ma'am. <laughs> Do I need to give you about twenty, thirty dollars for some um, lunch money for work tomorrow? Just go home, ma'am. Don't nobody want to hear that. That babbling. Women, let me talk to the women for a minute. Because, see, this woman has smoked a blunt. She hit a blunt. You can tell she hit a blunt. And when y'all hit the blunt, sometimes y'all women try to get deep, and you're not really that deep. And the only reason niggas listen to it, they listen to it if some pussy is about to pop off. All right? That's the only reason niggas will sit up and listen to it, because they're thinking, okay, I'm about to smash, so I got to hear her herbal tea babble. So, brother, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to start a business where I do henna art on, um, they're like tattoos. They're going to be temporary henna art, and I'm going to have a kiosk at the mall. And, you know, I think the henna is going to bring some kind of um, um, Nefertiti energy to the community. And niggas be like, oh, shit, that sounds tight. That sounds tight. I, I, I like that. Yeah, brother, um, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm raising the funds right now, and uh, uh, she just started dry begging. You know, I'm just trying to get a little money for my little endeavor. <laughs> well, I might I'll let you hold some. <laughs> All right, the little nigga smash. And, and you still talking about the henna tattoo and the herbal tea. And like, no, okay. Girl, get this little $50 and put it on your little kiosk and go on home. Go home. I don't want to hear about your business plan. I don't want to hear about the kundalini energy. I don't want to hear about no herbal tea. Just go home. All right. Lord, let's get Mira in here. Mira, hop on, Mira. Um, hey, Tariq. Long time no speak. Um, but I just, I wanted to talk about your hatred towards henna. Um, oh. So do you just hate Indian women? Do I hate Indian women? No, are you Indian? Um... Maybe, maybe not. Only God knows. Nah, you nah, you're not Indian. Aren't you East African? Um, I'm anything you want me to be. I'm I'm a be- nah. I, I'm actually no. I'm, I'm white. Right. Okay. So wh- what's your problem? What you upset about? Um. Well, I just think you're hating on this sacred tradition. You know why are you hating on um Indian women for their love of henna and temporary Man. tattoos. And ma'am, uh, Mary, you're not even white. You're Somalian or something, aren't you? Um, ma'am, oh go ahead. Ma'am, ma'am, there's an Uber waiting for you right now to go drive. All right. Go ahead and drive that Uber, ma'am. Because your material is falling flat. You do what you do, which is drive Uber. All right. The material is horrible. That's why I can tell you a foreign tether. You guys are not witty at all. You do not have no good wit. But the wit is the wit is shit. <laughs> Let's get Sharda Galladay. Let's get Sharda Galladay. What's up, Sharda? Miss Sharla, Sharda. It's Sharday. Hello, three. Sharday. How are you? I'm here? good. I just wanted to give you a shout out and I appreciate everything you do. And that's really all I wanted to say. Thank you, dear. See, that's how women y'all got to be like that. You know? <laughs> be like, be real to the point. You know what I'm saying? That's women be like that. Don't be like the herbal teacher. See, I like Sharday. She come over, get her a little something. 
and then be like, okay, thank you, and then leave. I like that. Yeah. I like women like that. Just come over and do what you got to do. And then you're like, okay, I got to go. I know you got to go to sleep and I got to go to work, so I'm going to holler at you. But thank you. They'll thank you for piping them down. I like that. I thank you. I appreciate you. And I go sit there talking your ear off. Like, before I leave, I just want to show you some henna tattoo artwork that I've done. This is a butterfly that I'm going to do, and it's going to have the Buddha statue in it. Yes. Go home. Get your ass home with your henna art and herbal tea. I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> God. Lord, Lord, Lord. I hate a babbling ass woman. Mm -hmm. oh, nobody want to hear that shit. Especially after a dude and smashed. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Let's see who we got. Let's get, um, um, okay, who we got? We got a lot of people in here this evening. And tonight's show is sponsored by RootWorkStyle.com. RootWorkStyle.com. That's what we own. RootWorkStyle.com the most popular natural deodorant that's in the game right now. It is popping. Let's get this young lady here. Um, what's your name? You got all of these. You got some of these kundalini letters. What's your, what's your name? Bunny? Soft Bunny? Hello. Bunny, are you one of these babbling herbal tea chicks? Because you got that henna, that henna art. Are you mm. one of them babblers? And what if I am? Because maybe I am. Lord, um, I pray for the niggas who smash you. <laughs> Lord. Lord, where are you from, dear? Los Angeles, California. There you go. So what's on your mind, ma'am? I don't know. I was just sitting here with my friend, and he happened to have your little listening podcast on. I'm high as fuck on the street drinking my Jamba Juice and I was like, what am I hearing in the background? It sounded like some nigga ASMR. And it was you yeah. and y'all people yeah. talking and it had me cracked up. Y'all were saying some funny stuff. So you, you with your dude, you with your homeboy right now. Yeah. And are y'all, what, what y'all drinking on? Are we breaking them? Drinking? Jamba Juice. Drinking? I got my Jamba Juice oh. right here. I'm sipping. Are you mixing it in with something, or did you smoke a no, blunt before? No, uh, a nigga just wanted a smoothie. Okay, but did you smoke something before? Oh, yes. Of there you go. Did. That there ganja, you. we in Cali, baby. Yeah, and I know that nigga's trying to get rid of your ass, because he probably been smashed, and you's hanging around babbling. Never that nigga's that. Niggas love listening He's... to me talk. No, they don't. They, yes, they do. To... He took you to Jamba Drews. He tried to ditch you, but then you ran to the car. I ran so, to the car. Yes. Oh, he's trying to get rid of your ass. Mm. He's trying to get rid of. He he hit it, and now he's trying to split it. He's okay. trying to leave. He's trying to. Well, yes, he is. What part of LA are you from? The Valley, baby. Uh, what part, Van Nuys? Northridge. Okay. Okay. You go to the Sun? Yeah. Okay. There it is. All right, well, y'all be safe out there. Y'all be safe. Everything is going to be all right. Okay. Oh, Lord. Man, man, man. Boy, the, you know, the pizzas out here in New York are very good. I need to go downstairs and get one of get a pizza. I got a taste for a pizza. The pizzas out here are crunchy, man. They got a nice, crunchy vibe to them. These New York pizzas are really, really popping. If you come to New York, you got to get one of these pizzas. Let's get um, 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 Infinite. Uh, all right. Infinite. Hop on, Infinite. How are you? I'm good, sir. How I'm good. It's been a minute since I talked with you, but, man, you know, been a fan for a long time. I just wanted to comment on your the hip-hop documentary. Have you – a few questions. Have you figured out a name for it? And I'm, I'm glad you're doing that, by the way. I even talked about Dwan B way back, man, like a year ago when he was talking about it. And I wish that he would have done it, but I'm glad you are. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we got a name and we're going to announce the name pretty soon. But yeah, we got a name and um, the concept. And Dwan is going to be in this, too, by the way. He's going to be in this one. Too. Oh, perfect. I see you got some yeah. of the legends. You got Coke LaRock. You got uh, Trixie. You got uh, what's his name? Melly Mel. So that's that's dope. Cornbread. You talk about all the time. So that's that's dope for you. Okay. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not playing around, man. And, and these legends that people have just been ignoring them and acting like they ain't there. A lot of people thought when well, they saw me with, in a picture with Cornbread, they were like, damn, we thought Cornbread was dead. You know, this is how they omit these brothers and sisters. So, you know, this is what we're here for. Sheena, Lord, look, Sheena, God, Sheena is still trying to get on. Sheena, go home. Sheena, look, okay. Fellas, I'm going to bring Sheena back up. Sheena, get in the Uber and go home. Sheena will not get in the Uber. Tariq, the Uber is off track. He's running behind. Sheena, Lord. Tariq, no, real do talk. You be, no, off of the, do off you be of doing that, this to no, do this? Off of the side talk. I want to learn about the real you. I want to know about your project. Like I told you the other day, it's my first time pulling in your space. This is my second time. Um, listen to the homie, you about projects, you about the hip hop mm -hmm. community. So let's get off all the negative Uber vibes, the negative. sexuality we type stuff, and let's focus on the assignments. I want to know about it's the not... projects. I want to hear what you want. Okay. Go home. <laughs> Lord, go home. Get in the Uber, sweetie. God, this is y'all, y'all ladies like this. I can imagine the dudes you deal with. Goodness gracious. Can you imagine Sheena coming to your house? She won't leave. She'll literally bring over her toothbrush and her curling iron. And she's one of them chicks that damn just going home. She just moved the hell in. You waking up and she's in the kitchen and shit. God damn go home. Boy, you one of them kind. You are clingy, Sheena. You are very clingy. Ladies, do not be clingy like that. Learn how to go home. Learn how to land your plane. Okay? Are we trying to bogart on niggas? Damn. All right, Sheena, we'll talk about some other stuff later. We, we, we vibing on some other things right now. No, nigga, you're going to talk about what I want you to talk about. You're going to love on me. Like, damn. I will not be ignored. Damn, Sheena. That's why I don't be having no side chicks. Man, I, I fuck around and get a Sheena. Shit. Lord. That's the main reason I don't be having no fucking side chicks, man. I fuck around and get Sheena's ass. I'm ass out. I got to get rid of her. Showing up to the kids' school and shit. I'm trying to show these kids some henna art. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Take your ass home, Sheena. It's not negative, baby. You just got to go home. All right? Just land your plane. Oh, goodness. I'm, Sheena's wearing me out, man. You wear me out, Sheena. <laughs> No, no, listen. It's too much negativity, brother. Now, I got some banana bread we need to talk and eat over. We need to eat this bread and we need to talk. No, we don't. No, we don't, ma'am. Man, man, man. All right, let's get one. Or let's get one, probably one more person in here. Because um, we got a lot of people. Um, let's get... Um, uh, come on, man. Let's get some new faces in here. All right. Let's get X Nihilio. X Nihilio. I think that's your name. X Nihilio. Okay. Man, man, man. X Nihilio. Hop on, man. All right. Michael, right? He's his, his phone is kind of janky. He's trying to get on, but his phone is janky. All right. All right. Come on, bro. All right, let's hurry up. All right. While we're waiting on this brother to get his phone together, 
All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because we got a lot many people we got in here. Okay, we got damn near a thousand folks in here tonight. All right. Uh, it's like one o'clock out here in LA. Uh, not LA, in New York. I'm still in New York. Shout out to all my New Yorkers. Having a great time out here in New York. New York is a vibe. Let's get um let's get Michael Charming here. Michael Charming. Hop on, brother. Michael Charming. Michael Charming. How are you, Mr. Michael? I'm very fine. I'm okay. I'm very, very good. What's on your mind? Sorry? What's on your mind, sir? What is on your mind? Uh, okay. Um, actually, nothing much. I'm just kind of, um, you know, just... I just came on Twitter. And then I'm like, oh, the Narik, the Nashi. That's awesome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Dude, this is not one nine hundred bussy chat yes. where you just call up chat with niggas. All right, you got to kind of have a topic, brother. This ain't just you know. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Okay, yeah. All right, all right. So we're gonna let you go, Michael. Yeah. But this is not that definitely. Okay, thank definitely. you. Definitely. Bye. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. Okay, niggas, don't don't call up trying to just have casual conversation. You know that's weird. I don't have casual conversations with niggas. Let's let's get some shit straight. I don't know what that vibe because a couple of niggas. Hey, hi, what you doing, N nigga? No, this is you got to bring a topic to the conversation, nigga. Don't don't call up for casual conversation. I don't do that with niggas. I don't do that in real life. If a nigga called me, like, hey, nigga, I got $30,000. Okay, there we go. We talking about some money. We got we got business. I don't have ca casual conversations with niggas. Yeah? Niggas calling them, hey, Tyree. Yeah, what's happening? Oh, nothing. The fuck you calling for, nigga? <laughs> that was not like a bitch. Oh, women be doing that. Yeah, I can understand a woman. Hey, Tyreek, what you doing? I'm chilling. Okay, I can understand a woman doing that because you know they they want some player vibes. But a nigga calling up, making small talk. Hey, Tyreek, what you what you wearing right now? You know it's gonna go there. You, you know eventually gonna go somewhere real moist. So I cut niggas off early. I don't know where you're trying to go with it, nigga. I don't do casual conversations with dudes. If I talk, any dudes call this business. You know, you're going to call and contribute to the topic or say, hey, nigga, I know where some money is. Hey, whoop de whoop. It's that type of thing. I don't, I don't have casual conversations with niggas. There's phone lines you can do that with. You know. One 900 man meet or some shit, you know. There's websites. You can go to Lil Nas X's website and do that. We don't do that here. Right? And even the women, I don't really want to have small talk with these women. Like Sheena's ass. Sheena's trying to have random small talk. Hey, brother, let's talk about something positive. Let's talk about my feelings, brother. Let's leave the negativity alone and let's get off of this low vibrational vibe, my brother. No, ma'am. No, 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 no. Lord, let's let's go to a topic. Let's talk about something specific. You right down there, Sheena? Do, Sheena, do you you be talking that herbal tea shit when a nigga hitting it? You sound like one of them type, just chatty patty. A nigga hitting it. You know, um, you, you going too deep in me. When you go deep in me, that'd be doing something to my cervix. And you know I didn't have surgery before. You like just talking too damn much. You're just fucking up the damn vibe. You know, one of them <laughs> she's trying to get back in. Don't be a chat. Let me don't be messing up the vibe. When a nigga's trying to get down with you, don't just talk the 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 vibe out. 
and they want to hit it real quick. Y'all sitting on the sofa like, oh, let me go. I got to go turn the, the air down. And I got to go close the curtains and then close my screen door. Cause there'd be flies coming in here. Like, God damn. Let's just bend over and let's get it. Let's stop fucking around with all that stuff. Oh, I had got some beans on the stove. I got to let it simmer down a little bit before they burn up. Because I don't know how long we're going to be doing it. Get them. God damn. Just live in the moment and shut your ass up. Can you do that, Sheena? Sheena, can you live in the moment, dear? <laughs> Sheena. Hey, love. You are so silly. You're a mess. You got me recapping my last <laughs> Bloody Mary for the night. Like, I was done. They're going to make me a last Bloody Mary on your last note. Since you think I'm capping you or whatever you guys call it. Um, Tariq, I, I really wasn't yes. coming in for all that love because literally I just went, I'm just going to hit you and I'm going to need you to go. That's the part I need you to understand. Like, I, I'm not going to mm-hmm. hold your hand. I'm not about to kiss you. I don't need to know where you at. I'm not into your feelings. I, I'm more on the, you know, I, I walk more on the other side than you think. I don't need you to hold my hand. I hold my mm-hmm. own hand. I'm going to hold yours probably, too. Now, Sheena, what was the last relationship you were in, dear? Sheena? Oh, I'm, I'm mixing my drink. What did you say, love? You said, what was the last relationship I was yes, in? Yes, what was what the last my relationship? relationship? The last relationship I was in was moving into my own shit with everything in my name. No. That, that's my last no, relationship. No. With a man. I, I don't need about a it. man. Oh, God. One of them I, I need kind. a good man. Are oh, you a good shit. man, Tariq? Uh-huh, but I'm taking. Oh, no. okay. Well, that's good. And, and I, cannot, I cannot have you after my side chick. Uh, you you're wouldn't even be a side type dude for me because you're, you're I so can't even have. I know you do. You, 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 I couldn't have you. Already, you, could, you would be all in my business. You already You'd be complaining. All on a nigga. I couldn't even fuck you and just be done. Like, you would be, I know, you would, would be checking you, who's in my inbox and what you, you know. wouldn't leave, though. You, you'd be like, Where are you going? You wouldn't leave. I would, I just couldn't shake you. Really? That's you what know? you think? Yeah. Like, I just, I, I really shake am you. not into that type of vibe with man. Like, I don't need to be in your, I need y'all at my space. <laughs> I got shit to do. Ooh, I got bills to make, money to make. I don't need you in my space all day. I'm not holding oh, your hand. Please. I'm not kissing you on the cheek. Gina, I'm not holding your back. You, I might uh, cook you a meal you, if you acted halfway decent. Gina. Sheena, you got binoculars in your car now where you be stalking and spying on niggas. I can tell. You are very, very domineering and clingy. Aren't you? Aren't you, Sheena? I'm not, yeah. clen- I'm not clenchy, but I'm a tourist of bull. Um, I represent, I'm going to tell you what I want. I'm going to interview you. You're not going to interview me. I'm not the employee. I'm the employer. Um, oh, so I interview I- the employers. As the employee, if that makes sense. Lord, Lord, fellas, this mouth, just imagine this mouth that you got to hear. You got to butt heads with this woman, Sheena, 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 Sheena. Uh, when was the last time you were in a relationship with a guy, Sheena? Oh, actually, I was eating. Mm-hmm. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here, dear. Now, okay, when was the last? I was crunching my pickle and my Bloody Mary, and I didn't want to oh. crunch it in your ear, but that's okay. You said the last time of a relationship, I had to make sure yeah. my seasoning was on point. Um, mm-hmm. I don't do. I only do relationships with real individuals. So, um, that's probably. I I have two beautiful, blessed, boss daughters. So okay. you don't consider. You know, you can have... They're, they're, okay, where's their dad? Where's their dad? Their dad's are where they need to be. Do the universe. Okay. Right. That's why them niggas went to outer space to get away from that mouth. They had to go out of space in the universe. Whatever they needed to mouth. do on their individual path to get their peace, to be better, to be the best ass they can be for my daughters, I'm mm-hmm. going to support them in their walk, and I'm going to be the 
woman and the man and I'm going to stand up and boss up and cop these scholarships and make this money and buy their cars and do whatever the fuck I got to do. In the meantime, while these niggas getting their minds right, real talk to answer your question. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Thank you so much, dear. Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord. Man, man, man. But any dude who has to hear that mouth, Lord, forget about a relationship again, just smashing and you got to hear that. Women, don't be combative like that. Just you're being combative and contrary just for the sake of being contrary. No, that's why them two baby daddies then bounced. Ladies, do not be contrary just for the sake of being contrary. Don't wear your bitterness on your sleeve. She's wearing that bitterness on her sleeve. Ladies, don't do that. Don't be that. That's not a good look. That's not even a good sneaky link. That's not even a good jump off action. Niggas don't want to deal with that. You know. And Sheena might be an all right person, but Lord, that mouth. Mm. Let me see who else we got in here, because we got a lot of people in here. And I hope you guys got some of that root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Uh, who else am I going to get? I need to get off here, but let's get um, one more. We can get one more. Uh, let's get Tiffany. Let's get Tiffany here. Miss Tiffany. Hi, right, Tiffany. I'm good, Tiffany. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I was listening to the guy that called before that was saying, you know, he was Dominican and people were saying he wasn't black, like that back and forth conversation. Um, yeah. I've been listening to you for a while and um, I know that you were on Dr. Drew's show a long time ago. Yeah. And um, yeah. I think the topic was like police brutality, something. And uh, y'all just, you know, having a conversation and somebody was like, well, you know, he's not white, he's Hispanic. And you were like, well, Hispanic isn't a race. And everybody, like, lost it. And then yeah, Dr. Drew yeah. came in and was like, he's right, Hispanic isn't a race. <laughs> like, I was like, right. exactly, right. exactly. So my, my question for you was, is have you ever thought of, like, going into the history of America um, as far as like the one drop rule and how we have all these different people who present a certain way, but they don't expound it that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that way, because a lot of people, when they come here, they're like, well, I'm not that. I'm not you. You know, because that wasn't us. We just saw everybody black and white because that's what it is in this country. And yeah. the disrespect that we get is where well, they were like, oh, well, you know you know, over there where I'm from, I'm like, yeah, you're from there, but now you're here and you're complaining about hundreds of years of why we, you know, look at you that way. And you're like, no, nah, no, nah, not really, not really. But you're here though. And mm -hmm. so, I don't know. I was just thinking, have you ever thought about doing a documentary on that? So I'll land on that. Well, thank you, dear. Well, here's the thing. A lot of these other groups, they've always been on this whole thing where they're different from us. And they value themselves based on whatever proximity that they can psychologically get to whiteness, because a lot of them don't have any physical characteristics that can be white. But if they do, if they're a little lighter shade of brown or whatever, um, they can hang their hat on that. They have their little caste systems um, that they've had in the, the homelands that they f fled from. And then they try to do that little flex over here. And they do it covertly for the most part because they'll come around us when there's benefits to be made and be like, hey, I'm a minority like you. Hey, we're the same until they get something popping and then all of a sudden, hey, I ain't black like you, though. That type of thing. So they try to 
make these little power moves when there's resources and, and tangibles for their group or some kind of win for their group. Now, if they want to play that game, let's everybody keep that same energy. That's why the foundation of Black American movement has taken off and not everybody wants to cry foul now because now we're doing what you guys are doing. If everybody's going to kind of draw a line in the sand and then hold all their marbles and count their marbles and have a marble counting contest, we're winning that. You understand? Because we've been on this thing where everybody, we all the same, we all minorities, we all this. And people have repeatedly said, well, we ain't like you. We're different from you. So we're like, okay, you're right. So let's draw this line in the sand. We are our own ethnic group. We are foundational black Americans and you're not. And we're going to get things specifically for our group, which is reparations right now. That's the first thing we're going to get. And we're going to count all of our accomplishments and put them on the behind our line. Because we've been sitting up here using all of our accomplishments for some global kumbaya minority coalition and letting people eat off our accomplishments. We're saying no more. That's why we're doing the thing with hip hop. You're not eating off of that as if it is some type of equal contribution you've made. We're FBA everything that we've created. We're putting the FBA stamp on all of it. And I, oh, wait, hey, wait a minute now. Hey, we we all the same. Now they they get to talking that shit that we used to talk. Now we's all the same peoples. Now, yeah, you see, because we making a power move. Power is exclusive. When you start excluding every, it's not you ain't supposed to invite everybody in your circle. When you start saying, "Hey, certain people don't need to be around us at certain times. Certain people really don't need to be in our mix at certain times." certain things need to be regulated for us. We need to gatekeep certain things that's um, indicative of our culture. There's nothing wrong with gatekeeping that. Other people gatekeep their culture. When you start touching their culture, they say, hey, no, 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 don't touch that. And I'm talking about other black folks. When Michael B. Jordan went out there and tried to name his liquor, he had a rum that Jorvay, he tried to name it a name that was popular in Trinidad. The Trinidadians cried foul. All them damn tethers who sit up here and eat off our culture was like, hey, you can't touch ours now. Michael B. Jordan, and they made him change it. I wouldn't have changed shit, to be honest. I don't know why he um, um, folded for them. I wouldn't have changed the damn thing. But see, they cry foul if we touch any part of their culture. Yeah, fine. All right, we're going to gatekeep our stuff too. So all that, all the lies about hip hop, that's going to stop. We're going to do a real big gatekeeping. We're going to start from the top and then work our way down because hip hop is the biggest thing we need to be gatekeeping because that's the biggest um, music culture right now globally. That's a huge culture. And we're about to put a major FBA stamp on it. And stop all these damn lies. Y'all been eating off of our shit for the longest. And all lives mattering our culture. And falsely attributing people to it. To the creation of it. And we're going to stop that. Okay? So yeah, we're already in the process of doing what we need to do. Alright. Well, we got a lot of folks in here. But anyway, man, what y'all check out speaking of documentaries check out my film american maroon at american-maroon.com get the blu-ray it's great if you have a hard copy of the blu-ray you can see it in crisp high definition at american-maroon.com very good movie talking about foundational black american culture and how we were getting down and how we were resisting slavery over here we were putting in work that's a very phenomenal film. We talk about the black Aboriginal people who were on this land. We talk about the Moors who came over and the black people who were coming with the Spanish explorers. We, we break the game down heavy in American Maroon. So get that at American-Maroon.com. But let me get up out of here, man. It's been real. Papi Akute and Lola Vuve to the family. Peace.